Okay. All right. So, hey, we are live at Garfield Memorial Church with uh, Faith on Friday at 5 p.m. Uh, Pastor Terry and I are here with you. This is um, important stuff with, that we feel. The next two weeks, we're going to be looking at, we've been looking a lot about preparation and, um, you know, what's next for the people of God. I mean, you know, we're going through this pandemic. We're going through, um, you know, situations looking at our original sin in this country with racism. And all of us have kind of been on pause. Mm -hmm. For Garfield Memorial, I know, Terry, we've been really working on preparation Think about that since Easter, 14 yeah. weeks on uh, spiritual warfare. I mean, we don't call it that, but we put on spiritual PPE, yeah. planted, what are the in inputs, things. And uh, we're going to have some fun in our teaching series, but I think some things that we can look at to prepare ourselves, what is God's call on our lives? Strength Finders 2.0, learning our strengths. Terry, what do you want to say? We've been doing this since 2010. How do you think? Well, I, I think the strengths, and I love the temperaments, which we've done more recently, but the strengths has been transformative at Garfield. I mean, we've had close to a thousand people go through in um, just under 10 years. And, you know, we've talked about that. We've seen marriages saved. We've seen people change careers. And um, as people discover what's really good about them, then they're really unleashed to ministry and their whole conception of themselves changes and they begin to realize that God has created them uniquely and amazingly with a purpose. And so I think, you know, particularly at, at this time um, when people are, you know, there's so many questions and so many things seem up in the air, like to go back to, this is my identity as the child of God and I've been gifted. And um, if people don't know what Strengths Finders is, it's from Gallup, it's based on positive psychology and the idea that we should be looking at what's you know, great about us, not worrying about so much what our deficiencies are. And um, in, in the, in the strengths finder, we have a six week uh, group on that people discover the top five best things about themselves. And then we go into that. And um, anyway, I could go on, but it's getting oh, a know. whole new language for our We're going to dig into it. But I think Don Clifton, who was kind of the strengths guru said, let's quit worrying and psychoanalytically and uh, we've talked to many psychologists in our church who agree with it. Mm -hmm. There was a time when it's like, let's figure out everything that's wrong with you right. and fix it. And this was more about, let's figure out what you do really, really well. Mm -hmm. Let's enhance that. So we want to talk today about main facets of strengths, um, strengths-based uh, marriages, strength-based parenting, strengths-based mm -hmm. leadership. But Garfield, I think um, we dug down into this about what does it mean to be focusing on our strengths, not our weaknesses. And I really love that. So Terry, if you can um, tell us about, there's a misconception, I think. And then also Jesus told a parable that could probably help us with the strengths. So Terry, help us with that. Yeah. So what we call it is the talent misconception. And it's this belief that we have that if I just fix my weaknesses or if my family member or my friend or my spouse fixes my weaknesses, everything will be fine. And, and that's the, the way that we you know, look at it sort of backwards and what strength. And so we, there's a parable that we use um, that we talk about from Matthew 25 called the parable of the talents. And we don't, you know, talents, it's not like American Idol. It's not like the voice. It's a measure of, of money in biblical times. And Jesus is telling a parable. And I, I'm going to read through it. I may not read every word, but it's from Matthew 25, 14 to 30. So Jesus is talking a parable, which is the way that Jesus taught so often through stories. And he says, it's as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves or his servants and entrusted his property to them. And so he, he gives to one, he gives five talents to another one, um, two and to another one, one, each according to his ability and he goes away. And so what happens? Well, the one that had five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more. So he doubled his investment. But, and the one who had the two talents made two more talents. So he did the same thing. He doubled his, what he had received. 
But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. And so, you know, time passes, the master comes back and he settled accounts with them. So the one who had gotten the five came and said, master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I've made five more. And his master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of my master. And so the same thing with the one with two talents, the same conversation. You gave me two, I made two more. The master says, well done, good and trustworthy slave. Uh, you've been trustworthy in a few things. I'm gonna put you in charge of many things. And then comes the last one. Remember the one who just got one? And so he says, master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's a little harsh, right? You hear this story where, you know, two people double their investment. One person buries the money in the ground. He's afraid of the master. And it, we, when we share this in the, the strengths groups, we talk about, you know, why do we include this last part where the one who buried the, um, the talents is the one who, um, who gets punished. <laughs> and I really need this dog to be out of here. I know, but I just couldn't get <laughs> Okay, then, uh, reality TV. Yeah, you're being um, punished. Anyhow, so the, the one with the one who buries it, the, the truth is the one who buried the talent was the only one who did the right thing according to the law. The other ones, if you were entrusted with the money of some, someone else, the, um, the proper thing to do with it is to just protect it. And these other guys kind of gambled with it and they happened to do well, but this guy buried it and he was miserable. But when we talk about the parable is, it, did you notice it said to each according to their ability? And so mm -hmm. God gives the talents that people, um, gives talents to people and they're expected to use them. And so the one who buried it, even though he was doing what was correct by the law, he gets cast into hell. But think about that. If you have talents and you suppress them or you haven't discovered them or you don't use them, isn't that a kind of miserable existence where you're just kind of wondering, you know, who you are and why you're created and what your purpose is. And um, so I, th that's why we talk about, you know, this talent misconception and that we really need to take what we have and use it. And that's how we flourish. So if God has given us gifts, when we use them, we'll flourish. If we don't use them, we'll be cast into hell, you know, metaphorically speaking. Well, actually, people who study Matthew, uh, many people think that that verse, you know, the one who didn't was cast into, you know, darkness, gnashing of teeth, that that was a, what we call redaction, something added. Mm -hmm. But remember us uh, going through the training, and you kind of said this, that if you're not using your strength, right. if you're not living in that, you're living in that kind of darkness. So yeah. um, I, I, I hear you on that. Um, and I think the fact that um, we think to try to tell people be good at everything right. is really, a, I mean, a struggle. Well, it's impossible for one thing. Totally. And, and um, there was something I read that psychoanalysts said that 14 to 1, this is what I, up to now, 14 to 1 psychoanalytical or, you know, uh, probably is self-help says fix your weaknesses. Right. And fix the negative. Um, you know, uh, but that we're trying to say, let's figure out what you do well. I like that. Um, the image we've used about trying out for a track team where maybe you can sprint or maybe you can throw a shot put and but 
a coach would look at you and said, wow, here's somebody who's running for miles and miles and miles, and they don't get tired, but they really stink at throwing a, a little shot put, a ball. But life says, oh, let's get in there and the shot put and make you better. Um, and the truth is, it should be like, no, you do something. You, you're running great. Let's help you be greater. So I don't know. That that seems to be something yeah. we really work hard on. Yeah, we, we really tend to look at, like you say, what we're not great at and then spend all this energy on it. And it's it's, it's not only frustrating, but it's it's really a misuse of what God has given us. So it's we've taken uh, a resource that God has given us and we're saying, oh, we don't, we don't care about that. We're going to focus on something else that's that's really not in our wheelhouse. And that's really not good stewardship of, of God's gifts either. When you think about um, it. Yeah, and so we're, uh, for, folks, we're going to help you. Uh, Garfield has been a strengths-based um, focused ministry. Like Terry said, uh, Pastor Terry, we've had close to a thousand folks go through We've had folks change careers. So we put up the, the, uh, the, the resource, Terry, Strength Finders 2.0 uh, through Gallup. Um, we've had some strength coaches come into our place. Sorry, it will be. Terry and I went through the training. Um, and this is something, it's, it's pretty easy to take. Uh, you can go into it. Um, you buy the book, but you're really buying the uh, assessment. Um, it's, I don't know what it is now. It was. 20 bucks, it's probably less. Um, you buy the book, like Terry's putting up there. And then um, in that book, um, you go in there at the end. So this is, the book is, people say, well, let me read this book. The book is kind of a glossary of strengths. Um, it's something that you're really um, uh, looking through, like the boilerplate. What does this strength look like? There are 34 signature strengths. And I want to let you know that there's a one in 33 million chance that somebody has the top five signature strengths that you do in the same order. Think about that. One in 33 million. That's like a fingerprint, never before, never again. And that's only for the first five. Right. Think about that through the first 34. Yeah. So, and we talk about this a lot. Uh, Pastor Terry will show this later. Psalm 139, we're uniquely and wonderfully made. You take this online assessment. Um, it's I look at strengths to Myers Briggs as like this is so user friendly. Mm -hmm. It is. I can get like what's best to me. You take it. It it takes 18, 20 minutes, and you find out what's what's kind of my top five out of the 34. And um, it's it it really gives you a sense of who you are. And uh, Terry, if you can walk them through like the talent, the knowledge, the skills, that would be great. Okay, so and this we use some of the language and strengths a little different than than we hear of it normally. But but there's this a you know an equation so to speak. A way to think about it is a talent plus a skill plus knowledge equals a strength. And so to break it down a little bit, when we talk about a talent, so we've moved away from the biblical sense of a kind of currency that was so valuable, but it's, it's simply this, a natural way of thinking, feeling, or behaving. Talents can't be learned or acquired. So you're really born with it. And they're things that you do instinctively and that naturally give you satisfaction. And I think that's, that's important to remember because one of the ways to identify um, your talents or your gifts are things that that energize you and things that um, naturally make you feel um, feel good. So then what's a skill? Well, skills are a basic ability to move through the fundamental steps of a task. They can be learned. And once you've acquired the skills necessary for a given activity, you have the ability to perform its basic steps. And so you can, you know, a skill is something that someone can teach you versus we said a talent is something you're just born with. You're naturally able to do it. And so then the next part of the equation, so remember it's talent plus skill plus knowledge. Um, knowledge, it's simply what you know. You can acquire knowledge through education or training. Knowledge is both factual and experiential. So if you want to, um, you take a talent and then you add these other things and then you get to the strength. 
And so it's the ability to provide consistent, near perfect performance in a given activity. And so it's a powerful and productive combination of talent and skill and knowledge. And to you know, drill down on, on that a little bit, I, I think it's really important to know that in terms of, so the talent is what you're born with. And so going back to the parable, we, the, uh, you want to do something with it. So you have to add the skills. You have to learn how to do things. We're not born, we may be born with a proclivity to something, to be able to do something. But if we don't get the skills, then we'll just kind of remain stagnant, stagnant and not reach our potential. And the same thing then, um, we need the knowledge because we need to learn things. We need to continually grow. And if, um, well, you know, Pastor Chip is extremely a talented communicator, but he works really, really hard on preaching and researching and learning how to um, communicate in all ways. So it's not just like, I'm good at this. I'm going to just let it, you know, I'm going to coast on that. But if we um, add knowledge and we add skills, then we've got truly a strength. And then there's so much power and possibility when we have invested the time and invested the energy in and again, back to taking care of developing, stewarding the gifts that God has given us. So I hope that's helpful to see that as an equation. And it's not like a, a formula, like you do this once and for all. You you're continually learning new skills. You're continually seeing your strengths develop and use them. And, and you know, when Gallup talks about it, you can't not use your strengths. You just can't. They're just going to flow out. Talk about that, how they're front of the brain. Yeah, and if you are in a in a position, I was talking with someone recently about strengths, and they hadn't heard about it before. And when I said, you know, when you're not operating your strengths, you're going to be drained, and when you are operating your strengths, you're going to be energized. And the person said, "Oh man, I think I'm in the wrong job." <laughs> you know, they just immediately realized that they they get so drained that they're probably not working in their strengths. And so that's why we're so passionate about you know, helping people learn their strengths. And, and Chip, you're really going to bring us to a little bit different level about this, you know, because we've talked about individually our strengths right. and that's where our focus has really been in ministry by strengths. But um, there were some other resources that, that we kind of flashed by earlier that. We yeah, wanted. we're going to, we're going to dig into those. And guys, I, I got to tell you, you can take that down, Terry, but um you know, this is so important because we talk about this is your natural, the way you react. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I mean, with the current events, um, you know, uh, my wife and I are really stressed in some ways because, you know, our son um, was kind of racially profiled with 10 guns drawn down on him with two, him and two of his African-American teammates going to a Walmart to cash their uh, work study checks. And somebody said, you know, I hate to say this language, forgive me, but I listened to the 911 tape. Three color boys are breaking into cars. And it was my son and two others. They just, they were going into Walmart. And so they got drawn down. Uh, I, I can't tell you, like uh, seven police cars, 10 guns. I went down and watched the um, videotapes of my son's he got out of the car, his hands were up, his cell phone fell out of his lap. And I was like, my gosh, if he'd have reached for that, Perry Freed would have been Trayvon Martin or Michael, you know, Brown. We would have had this. But I asked Perry, why didn't you reach for it? And he said, my strategic. Yeah. I was figuring it out. That's so amazing. Strengths are like, they're the front of the brain. If we use them in a very positive way, um, they will help us in so many ways. And I, it just, it struck me because, so I'm going to say some things about parenting uh, because we had a Zoom call uh, with our parents uh, at Garfield because kids going back to school, uh, kids going off to college, uh, a lot of stress. And I, I started reading. So Terry, maybe you can throw that back up, just strengths-based uh, based marriages, strength-based uh, parenting, we're not, we don't have to keep them up there long, but okay. that the strengths that we talk about 
you can start exploring those in different ways. So here's one with marriage, um, you know, um, that, um, you know, that you can look in your marriage. My wife and I have done this. The next slide is strength-based uh, parenting. Mm -hmm. So we, we've talked to our, our, our parents that maybe this is something you can work with, with your kids. And I, I want to talk about that a little bit as far as um, some of the things we can do. So some of you young people that are listening to us today with kids that you can do with parenting. But I guess, honestly, for Terry and I and others, I know Barb, some of you are out there. This is good for ourselves to go, go on strength hunts. Um, how we can focus on what's best about us instead of um, trying to always fix what's worst about us. So uh, I'd like to look at that, Terry. I think we had some slides in a sense of um, parent. Um, you know, after after the uh, the book, because I I don't know why. I just want to dig into this a little bit, and I don't think it's just about parenting, folks. When we go into this, it's really about you know our own strength hunt in some ways. Um, but it will help us, I think, in our parenting, in our, maybe you have uh, grandchildren, um, we can go past that one, um, you know, uh, you know, with ourselves. So here's the thing. We all need to understand our strengths. So I, Terry and I would tell you, you know, the thousand people we have to, have to go through, help we contact us the strength finders 2.0 it's a very easy assessment mm -hmm. we all have to understand our own strengths and then the next step learn to discover and help develop our children or others talents and strengths we found out going through strengths makes you way less judgmental because you start understanding other people's strengths and you don't try to fix people right you, you know, you just respect them. So let's go to the next slide. And Terry, I'm going to turn this over to you. Here's the thing they tell the parents. Notice, notice your children's strengths. Or let's put it this way. You don't know their strengths. Notice what they seem to be talented at. Right. Appreciate it. Support it. And then help build it up. Terry, that's a lot about what we say with strengths in general, right? Right. You really have to pay attention again, to things that, you know, bring fulfillment. So in the case of your kids, um, you're, you're seeing where they seem to really flourish, where they seem to be energized and really enjoy themselves in some ways. And then to give that feedback, because uh, we want to, again, focus on strengths versus weaknesses, focus on things that we see that, um, that are really positive, that, that are making a difference, that are having an impact. And so we want to really appreciate that. And, you know, kids really flourish when not empty praise, right? It's self-esteem is not about saying, oh, you know, you drew a great picture of a cat, you know, when or whatever. I mean, it's, it, it, we can sometimes say empty things, but when you genuinely see something um, in, a, in a child or in another person, and genuinely appreciate it and then support it. So that's kind of going back to when we talked about talents plus skills plus knowledge. So if you notice something um, in someone else, how do you help come around them and give them what they need to, to, to really begin to excel and then to help build your coming alongside. Um, as an adult, we are pretty, um, well, actually I, sh I, I don't, we need help too, right? We need help to build as well people to surround us and but kids need it too we talk about it takes a village to raise a child I think in some ways you know a, a child if we're really going on a talent hunt instead of going on uh you know sort of a criticism hunt right that um they'll do they'll do a lot better and they'll flourish and you know one of the things that we we talk about in strengths a lot is when when you came home with your first report card or your kid comes home with a report card. Yeah, and, go back to that slide, Terry. Go back to that. Yeah, That's so it. we say PE, A, science, A, 
literature, language arts, A, history, A, math, F. So someone brings home their report card. Chip, what are you going to talk about, right? We talk about the F. And, um, but we need to be saying, boy, you're really working. You know, you really seem to do well in these things. Let's build on that. Now, you're not going to ignore the math, right? You have to, <laughs> everybody has to know some math. And we're not advocating, um, you know, encouraging not doing well. But the point is that we, we jump on what's, what's negative and we really need to help build on um, where the strengths are beginning and the talents are beginning to appear. And, and for children, um, and, and Chip, you may want to say more about this as well, but the, the version of the assessment we talked about with, that takes 15 to 18, 20 minutes for adults, that can be taken really by an older teenager. Yeah, 15 and up, 15 and up. Yeah, 15 and up. And they, Gallup will say that your strengths are pretty much in there by that age and they're not gonna change throughout your adult life. But they do make um, a version, and Pastor Chip, you talked about this when we met with the parents called Strengths Explorers. That is for younger children. 10 to 14. 10 to 14. And they identify, um, I think, maybe three out of 12 strengths, three or four out of 12 strengths. So it's because they're not fully formed yet. But what's really great about that particular resource is that it's designed to be done with the parent and the child. Right. And so you really are working together, helping to build them and helping to um, work with them on that. So when we've learned this in adults and I have other people coming in saying, hey, this is for all of us. And it is noticing strengths. And so at Garfield Memorial Church, like we've drank the Kool-Aid, our staff, we all have to go through this. Right. We have to notice each other's strengths, appreciate them because they're different. But it's like a toolbox. We need a, a saw. We need a hammer. We need a screwdriver. Um, and appreciate each difference. We may not all have that. How do we support it? And how do we build that up um, within the community of faith? But again, this is particularly about children, but I think it's all of us. So go to the next slide, Terry. <clears throat> so how do you spot? Here's spotting. This is something that I talked to some of our parents and I, I, so guess what folks? This could be about you. How do you spot these strengths in you? Now, yes, we want you to think Strength Finders 2.0, spend the $20, to go through it. <clears throat> but if you're looking at your children as a parent, um, if you're looking at grandchildren or, um, you know, nieces, nephews, how do we spot these talents that can become strengths? So here's four things. One, yearning, right? Um, what do people like to do over and over and go over again? <clears throat> so one of our kids loved to just read and journal and write poetry. And our other kid was so active with, you know, sports and being around people. And I, I don't know about you, Terry, I wish we had this, you know, like 20 years ago. But for us, we- oh, I totally agree. Yeah, spotting that our one child was journaling, writing. Our other child was out there trying to engage, you know, with the United Nations. <laughs> and, and we can, you know, as you go through this, you'll figure out what those strengths are. But our thing is spot those things, spot, right. them. and we can do it in ourselves. This isn't, so we're talking about kids specifically, but let's look at this in ourselves. What are the things we're yearning? The second thing is rapid learning. What's something your child or you could get into and you just learn it so quick? Like you just... I just yeah. love it. So that may be in your strength package. The other thing we talk about is satisfaction. Um, you just live in this and you're happy. And, and Pastor Terry talked about this. We've learned this. If you're operating in your strengths, it's energy producing. Right. If you're not, you can do it, but it's energy draining. So look with your kids or others. What do they just seem to just get satisfaction in? This is early. And then I'm going to leave this, Terry, and you can talk about 
timelessness. What are the things you get involved with? Time just fades away. If you're in those things, you're probably in your strengths. But what do you think about that, Terry? Well, I, I think this is really helpful in terms of giving a little bit of a different lens to um, to begin to look for, for signs. It's almost like going on a, um, a detective hunt, right? Because, and especially if we're around people all the time, if we're around ourselves all the time, we're around our kids all the time, or others that we know are, you know, friends and people we work with, we, we may almost become uh, blasé or, or not notice. So I, I really like this idea of spotting and you're going on a kind of a treasure hunt, right? It's, it's really a treasure hunt to see. And these are kind of signs of behavioral signs that we can observe in somebody else. So it's not just doing a particular action, but it's the attitude and the, um, the energy with which, um, with which we do that. So um, I, I wonder, you know, thinking back to when you or I were kids, if there's something we might identify um, that would have been a hint of, of our, um, of our strength. So I, I'm just kind of thinking out loud right now, but, and it's good to see you guys watching with us on Facebook, but um, one of my strengths is, is the achiever strength, one of my top five. And that's a strength where you, um, you really like, you tend to have checklists. You really like to get things done. You, you have this sort of internal fire, um, you know, always kind of burning like what's next. Um, and and if, you, if you don't accomplish things, you don't feel really fulfilled. And um, this is gonna sound kind of weird, but then we know I'm weird. But when, um, when I was little and uh, I'd play with my toys, I really enjoyed playing with my toys. I played with Barbies, et cetera, et cetera. But I really liked cleaning up afterwards. Like I wanted to make sure that I got everything done. And once everything was put away, you know, and I went on to my next thing, I felt this real sense of satisfaction. And, um, and it just, I it was checking something off a list. And that's a very trivial example. But if I look back, that's really kind of an early sign of that sense of accomplishment. Does that make any sense at all? Mm. Can you think of something when you were a kid you know, evidence? Oh, of gosh. Yeah, I don't want to go into them, but. I bet activator there were. Yeah, it was always happening to be. A bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but I, so some of you there out there, if you want to put in the uh, chat, um, some of you have gone through Strength Finder, some of you haven't. And if you have, we'd like you to go through. But I think strength-based marriages, uh, my wife and I may do something, Terry. I think we're going to do one on this. Okay. Strength-based parenting, um, strength-based leadership. The focus of thinking about what God has kind of gifted us with and focus on that instead of trying to fix all of our deficiencies. I can't fix mine. Right. You know, uh, the, the, the biblical message is Jesus kind of took care of that. But I think, unfortunately, like they said, 14 to 1 psychoanalytical uh, uh, encouragement is, here's what's wrong with you. Let's fix it. Right. The strength said, here's what's right with you. Let's enhance that. Right. Uh, with our kids, with our marriages, uh, we should do that. Next week, um, Faith on Friday, we're going to talk about cultural intelligence, CQ, how are we wired to navigate the I think these tools are really, really important, but um, Garfield has been a strength-based um, ministry in the sense of, let's, we don't want you doing things you're not good at. I don't right. want to do that. Let's find out what we're gifted in and kind of fuel that. And so uh, we, 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 we hinted this one a little about um, looking for that in your children because we know the stress and we've been meeting with parents yeah. for the whole year, but maybe that'll help you. Let, let's go on strength hunts, like Terry said. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe, um, I don't know, other slides or take them down where we want to go. Yeah, well, I, I'll, I'll take down the slides for a second. I think we'll wrap up relatively soon. We have one more uh, slide, but I, I think just thinking about, you know, the challenge of, these times of the pandemic with the ongoing sin of racism in our country. Um, one of the things that occurs to me that's a benefit of, of strength-based in our 
all the relationships we're talking about is what does Paul say in Philippians? Whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is beautiful, think on these things. And so even, you know, it's with the stress of, um, you know, for many parents needing to assist them with virtual learning again or, or mixed schedule or whatever that is, um, it's good to be reminded to look for the, the wonderful things that you just love about your kids and to be able to breathe a little bit. So I think that's, you know, one of the things that, that this gets me thinking about. And, um, you know, if, if for those who've not, you know, taken strengths, I realize that we haven't explained, you know, in great depth, um, the, the kind of meat of it. And that's really maybe a teaser because as Pastor Chip said, we're looking at uh, other options further developing it. So strengths in marriage and, you know, I can attest in my marriage to my husband, Joe, we have strengths that um, seem kind of different. And that's part of a marriage partnership, right? Where you complement each other truly. And, but those are also then the things that get on your, your nerves. And um, so having that language to be able to say, um, boy, your, your adaptabilities drive me crazy because I have this achiever and uh, meaning that, you know, for my husband, he's just, goes from one thing to another. He's very flexible and, and I just like to get it all done and be very structured. And, and that's, it, it, I need to slow down sometimes and not be so darn focused. And sometimes he, I mean, he's, he's certainly a hard worker, but it, early on in our marriage, there was a lot of frustration. I'm going to be completely honest because of our strengths. And even though they um, certainly make us a good combination, not understanding them, not having the language, you know, made uh, it made such a big difference once we went through the strengths and to be able to even just name something, right? There's power in naming something for good and for evil. But when we name the good, and that's kind of going back to the spotting is to name and identify. So. I agree. And it was when uh, Jesus said to Legion, what's your name? And he said, man, there's a thousand names. Naming your demons, guys. Um, and Terry talked about in strength-based marriage. I think we're going to offer some of these um, various, uh, you know, opportunities, strength-based marriage, strength-based parenting. I think strength-based parenting, I've been looking at that. What a great thing to do right now when we're, yeah. you know, concerned. Our kids are going back to live a school or they're being on online. Let's do a strength hunt. What's going on? And how can we nurture that? Because, um, you know, we're, we're so conditioned to try to look at what's wrong with us and fix it. And I, I really do believe in strengths to figure out, you know, what's right with us. Right. Pour some, you know, gasoline on that. And how can we do better? Our family's done this. Um, I did with our extended family. Uh, we've had many through the church do that. I hope you do. And this could be something if uh, you're looking for something to do with your uh, children or what's going on right now. Um, this could be a great thing and we'll help you with that. So, uh, you know, call us on that. We'll definitely do that. But um, I, I got to tell you, since 2010, Garfield decided to be a strength-based um, congregation. It's really helped us because it also gives you universal language. That's right. That's so important. <laughs> That's beyond ethnic group or political party. I got ideation. That's number one. So I can connect with ideation people that it doesn't matter if they all vote like me or look like me. Like we need those higher languages, I think, which is really the true speaking in tongues. Yes, I, I totally agree. And I think when you have that insight about the strengths that it gave as a common language in a multi-ethnic, economically diverse church that, um, you know, we really helped connect us in, in even greater ways. And it's a recognition of uniqueness. And um, we're, as Chip has talked about, we're in, a, in a, a vision process, a visioning process this year, 2020. And part the process we're going through with our consultant is church unique, really looking at what's unique about your church and the sense, what are the strengths and how do you build on that? So this concept you know, goes across the board. So I, I said, yeah, take um, us to the last scripture and we'll close yeah, this. I up. just want to go, you know, Barb Smith commented and just said, uh, you know, what are uh, in response to a question, what are your top five 
the consistency and harmony were a surprise and those are the ones now that I notice the most. So I really like that Barb said that, that if, when you, you don't even have names for something and then once you understand it, then you see it everywhere, right? So I think that's helpful. So let's um, go to the last um, slide here. I don't know why it doesn't advance. Sorry, everybody. And this, this scripture, if you've been through strengths, will be familiar to you. Um, and, but I think it's something for all of us to, um, to really um, immerse ourselves in and let it speak to us. This is from the message paraphrase of the Bible. Um, you might have heard it. Um, um, you shape, you know, my inmost parts, but you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God. You're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. Mm -hmm. If we can internalize that, and, and, and not only that, but as we notice that in other people, um, what, a, what a great way to, to understand the amazing, not only creation that God has made of you and I, but also God's amazing. Who else but God could come up with the, uh, the creativity and the, the way that we're uniquely and wonderfully made and that we're one in 33 million and then some, you know, you said before fingerprints never before, never again. Yeah. And so I think to just, you know, as we close today, just know that you're marvelously made. And then, so let's live into that together. And, and we've got some tools that we want to share. And, and so we'll continue to talk about this and give opportunities for people, but it's been good to hang out today and um, talk about one of my favorite subjects. Yeah, you and me both. And Tim, I don't know if we can go back to that notice, appreciate, for whatever reason. Um, yeah, it, I guess it's MASH. I mean, MASH was a great, um, you know, 70s TV show. I've had six people text me while we're talking saying Nash. I like okay. this is really got I don't know why. I didn't I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah. Saying so this is way beyond important. this is about noticing in your children, but people are texting me, I mean, off the chain saying this is something with life, with each other, right. we should be doing. Right. Notice, appreciate, right. support, help build. I don't know that that's something in strength based parenting right so clear let's notice our kids strengths spot it right what did I say the yearning the rapid learning the satisfaction timelessness let's appreciate that yeah let's take them into the math let's support that and let's help build it up but so many people I mean I'm sorry I, I guess too many people have my cell phone <laughs> they're texting me saying that is a baseline for what we should be doing. Yeah. Notice each other. Right. Gosh, what if we did that? We just noticed each other. We just noticed our differences. We respected those. We love it. It's part of the manifold wisdom of God, like I say. Yeah. Then we appreciate it. Gosh, I appreciate. Yeah, we're not the same. I appreciate it. I'm going to support that and I'm going to build it. Right. Maybe we got this Nash thing going on. I don't know. Yeah, it's a great. I, uh, I would never thought that, but I've gotten all these texts saying that somehow that is really hip with people. So yeah, let's yeah. go Nash. Let's go Nash. All right. Well, Nash, everybody. <laughs> it's been good to tune in for Faith on Fridays. And like uh, Pastor Chip said, we'll be back next week with Harry Lee talking about intelligence yeah different guys yeah next week yeah all, all right. right let's go out we love y'all we'll love talk you. guys next week bye everybody <laughs>